Dr. Budaw, how is rotator cuff pain treated if non-operative treatment doesn't work? In the absence of a full thickness rotator cuff tear, if you have shoulder pain from the rotator cuff and you failed appropriate non-operative management, meaning three months of strengthening for the rotator cuff and the shoulder blade muscles, an injection, and uh, just trying to avoid the most provocative activities, if that doesn't work, you have basically you know three choices. Number one, do nothing and live with it. Number two, keep going with the non-operative management. Um, keep doing the exercises, but if it's been two to three months and they haven't worked, the odds are they're not going to work, but you can keep going with them. Or three, a surgical solution. Uh, as I alluded to in the last video, people used to think that rotator cuff problems were due to this bone spur or hug coming down from the acromion and it digs into the rotator cuff tendon. The research from the past 25 to 30 years, uh, detailed better on my website, rearmyourselftexas.com. Uh, goes into that, but that's just not true in 95 plus plus percent of cases. What happens is, like we discussed previously on the last video, you get the generation of the tendon, and it's called rotator cuff tendinosis. Basically, that accumulates too much for the body to heal with the strengthening exercises. So, older procedures were to take out the hook or to smooth the bone or whatever. That ignores the primary problem with the, which is the rotator cuff tendinosis. Now, um, what happens often, not to disparage things, but uh, what happens often is people will just inject you or tell you to rest it, give you anti-inflammatories, which again is not going to be potentially curative like the rotator cuff and scapulothoracic, meaning shoulder blade strengthening exercises. They don't work. You do the acromioplasty or the subacromial decompression, whichever term they want to use. Um, and then they do the rehab. Then afterwards, uh, they do the rotator cuff and the scapulothoracic strengthening, and then you feel better. But was it the surgery or was it the rotator cuff strengthening. Uh, that was addressed by Alexandria Kirkley in a study that showed that if you just take appropriate non-operative, appropriate operative candidates, meaning people that have failed the three months of scapulothoracic and rotator cuff strengthening, and then you do the acromioplasty or the subacromial decompression on them, only 47% improved with the surgery. Another more recent study showed that if you rehab them, one in one group and then the other group rehab plus the subacromial decompression, uh, chromioplasty, that there's no difference between the groups. So that procedure doesn't really add a lot. It does create a lot of pain and stiffness. Uh, if you overdo it, it can lead to loss of shoulder elevation. So that's not so great. What you need to do is attack the primary problem, which is the rotator cuff tendinosis. Uh, I've written up the arthritis, arthritis whoa, sorry, arthroscopic rotator cuff debridement on a number of uh, uh, chapters and uh, research papers. And this has the best long-term track record for um, pain relief and function. Basically, um, you use a motorized shaver, you go in arthroscopically, and you just clean out the bad tendinosis tissue. Uh, tendinosis is painful in and of itself because it's ischemic just like heart attack tissue is painful like uh, gangrene can be painful uh, if you cut off the blood supply to any part of your body it's going to be painful so you get rid of that tissue uh, there's no additional damage to structures that don't need to be damaged in the vast majority of cases there's no bones for the needs to be addressed if there was in the rare case and it does rarely happen i'm not saying it never happens it's just very uncommon uh, you can take that out at the same time but you do that when you see it not just based on some theory that is misguided uh, when you just remove the uh, tendinosis tissue very little uh, pain uh, downtime, you can get back once you get the rotator cuff muscles strong enough to handle the stress that you want to put on them so you don't accumulate new damage, and that does very well. Now, in young patients, uh, 20s and their 30s, uh, often there's an underlying instability of the uh, shoulder, even if it hasn't dislocated. Sometimes the ligaments are a little loosey-goosey, 
and the uh, there's a lot of slop in the rotator cuff, the ball in the socket joint, and the rotator cuff has to work overtime in these cases to stabilize the uh, shoulder. So it's doing its own job, elevating the shoulder and rotating the shoulder, plus stabilizing the shoulder, and so that's a setup for overuse. And so in those cases, that's identified at the time of surgery, once the patient is under anesthesia, I always examine the shoulder if it's loose, then at the same time, we uh, clean out the bad uh, rotator cuff tendinopathy or tendinosis, we can also stabilize the shoulder arthroscopically. So uh, that's basically in a nutshell, the take home message is, um, in the absence of a full thickness tear, you should fail appropriate non-operative management before going through surgery or being offered surgery in that uh, the arthroscopic rotator cuff debridement has a uh, very low complication rate, a very high success rate, as opposed to trying to attack a bone spur, which is usually not the problem in the first place. Thank you. Thank you for your time today, Dr. Buell.